All right, let's get started. Um, I am Councilman Eric Costello from the 11th District. Uh, this is the Judiciary Committee. Uh, we are here today for Council Bill 20-0223R, approval for the exchange of a Class BD7 license for use at 3607 Fleet Street to a Class A7 license for use at 5601 Eastern Avenue, also known as 5701A Fleet Street. Um, I'd like to recognize uh, Vice Chair Mary Pat Clark from the 14th District, Vice Chair Councilwoman Mary Pat Clark from the 14th District. I apologize for not saying your title, Madam Vice Chair. Councilman Ed Reisinger, 10th District Member of the Committee. Councilman Leon Pickett, 7th District Member of the Committee. Councilman Zeke Cohen, 1st District. Councilman Isaac Gizzi Schleifer, 5th District. Uh, we are also joined by Matt Stegman representing Mayor Jack Young. And we have Dominic McLilly representing Council President Brandon Scott. Before we get started, I'm going to turn it over to the bill sponsor, Councilman Cohen, for a very brief introductory remarks. Councilman Cohen, the floor is yours. Thank you, Mr. Chair, and thank you to members of the committee um, as well as all the staff. Uh, so the resolution, the request is to transfer a license for a package store. Um, into a new development, which is Yard 56. Uh, it's the former PEMCO site, in the Bayview neighborhood. This is a mixed use project. It's been um, in development now for uh, a little over a year and a few of the businesses are starting to open up. We are really, really excited about uh, this development. It represents some real investment in a neighborhood that you know, hasn't seen a ton of investment. Um, so the request is to transfer the license. Um, it's a A7 license. Um, and it would go from the original site, which is 3607 Fleet Street, to the new location at 5601 Eastern Avenue. Um, I respectfully request uh, the support of the committee and my colleagues um, to make this happen and support what I think is a really exciting development in Southeast Baltimore. Thank you. Thank you, Councilman Cohen. I know that we have Councilwoman Shannon Sneed from the 13th District on the phone. And I know that uh, Councilman John Bullock from the 9th District uh, is having some technical issues, but will be joining us momentarily. Uh, with that, I wanna jump over to the Liquor Board. Uh, we have uh, Deputy, Deputy Executive Secretary Tom Akris on the line. Uh, Tom, uh, you have the bill report for this. I believe it's favorable. Uh, do you stand by your report? Mr. Chair, uh, Tom, uh, Thomas Akris, Deputy Executive Secretary, Liquor Board, Baltimore City. I do stand by uh, the report. Uh, the bill uh, allows for this license to convert from a Class BD7 to an A7 license. Uh, that is the uh, council resolution that's required by Alcoholic Beverages Article 12902.1. So once this license is transferred and is approved by the Board of Liquor License Commissioners, this resolution would allow them to then request the BD7 license to be, uh, to be converted to a Class A7 license, which would be a packaged goods license from 9 a.m. to 10 p.m. Excellent. Thank you very much, Tom. Uh, before we go on to the law department, uh, Matt, I sent you um, a PDF of amendments that have been offered up uh, by the, um, uh, the operator uh, who Councilman Cohen introduced uh, this bill on behalf of. Uh, they're only technical amendments. They basically are a, a slight change in the, the address. Uh, but Matt, if you could please uh, send those out to committee members if you have not already. Um, again, uh, committee members, this is just a technical change here. I want to be clear on that. Um, let me go over to Department of Law now. Hillary and Victor, I don't know who's running point on this one, uh, but uh, is this bill approved for legal sufficiency? Victor, you're on mute. Uh, sorry, we're good? 
Uh, this is Victor Vila, City Law Department. Uh, we are prepared to approve the bill for form and legal sufficiency as drafted. I haven't seen the amendments. If they're just technical, and we're not taking away from uh, the uh, from the block face that with what uh, the law requires, and we're going to be. I'm going to post the um, amendments in the share screen function. Oh. Bear with me for one moment. Mr. Chair, I can put them up right now if you'd like. Uh, I got it. Well, you do it. Sounds good. My share screen button is not working. Thank you, Matt. Yeah, as you can see, it's just replacing 5701A Fleet Street with 517 Bayview Boulevard. No, no changes at all to the bill, just a correction of the address. That sounds fine. Great. No problem. Excellent. Thank you very much. Uh, council members, before we go into public testimony, are there any questions for Board of Liquor License Commissioners or uh, Department of Law? I see Councilwoman Clark. Uh, first, Matt, could you please remove the screen share? Thank you, sir. Councilwoman Clark, you have the floor. Uh, yes, thank you. I, I just wanted to ask a question. So basically, what's the difference in these two licenses? I, I guess I'm asking the sponsor is that you can't do packaged good retail with the bd7 why i just wondered why they the change from a bd7 to uh, i think it's an a7 um what what was the difference that's correct and it's also councilwoman clark a whole new uh development so we did something similar um, a little while back for uh, a transfer of a lick of a license in it went from Harbor East to Harbor Point as that new development came online. So this is, I think, been sort of the standard procedure as these new developments come on is you've got to go through this resolution process. Law department, does that sound right? Well, Actually, can I just, my question is, I, I'm sure that it's all fine, but my question is, if I was, why would, why would I want to take a BD7? What are the reasons? Take a BD7 and make it a A7. What, what do you get that way that you didn't have? with the original license, or is there anything? Councilwoman, can we jump over to, to Tom Akris? Cause he's yeah. on this. Yeah. Tom, answer the councilwoman's questions, please. Tom? Well, let's not hold up the hearing. I, it's just, it was just an academic question. I kept wondering, I, I know what a BD7 is, it's, you can do just about anything, but to go to an ACE to your reason. Um, I just it, wondered what, Mr. What it was. Mr. Chair, Mr. Chairman, this is uh, Matt Stegman from the, the mayor's office. Um, uh, Council, Councilwoman, Clark, I'm sorry, Mr. Chairman, I'll be recognized as a- Yes, of course, of course. Thank you. Uh, but uh, yes. Madam Councilwoman, uh, the basic difference uh, a bd7 is a is a tavern license I, I know you have a couple of these in your district where I you do. have the um uh the liquor store that has the uh the you know the, the, the tavern attached and yes you know there have been problems uh you know different places in the city with uh some of these places where they have a, a tavern that is a tavern in name only it's essentially a liquor store that is correct uh, has very extremely permissive hours um there was a legislative a bd7 yeah, and there was a legislative change in Annapolis a couple of years ago to let some of these operators who didn't didn't want to have to operate that tavern part, like did want to operate a packaged goods store uh, to exchange those BD7 licenses for the A7. And I can follow up with you offline about what the no. differences are, but uh, the, the, basically the difference is, you know, they do not have to have that attached. They don't need the tavern. So yeah, that that's well, the essential difference, and it's that that's okay. you know, it's a, it's a little more than that. But part of the legislative change in Annapolis required that anybody who wanted to exchange these licenses does have to come before the council and uh, have a resolution for that. Yeah, the, I mean, we don't usually get liquor board stuff at the Baltimore City Council, so correct. 
just wanted to understand why we do when we do. And thank you for the explanation. Absolutely. And if, yeah, again, if you have any other questions, I'm happy to follow up with you offline. Okay, thanks. Thank you. Um, we've now been joined by Councilwoman Shannon Sneed from 13th District from phone to video. Uh, and then we are still waiting on Councilman John Bullock uh, from the 9th District. We've also been joined by Councilman Chris Burnett from the 8th District. Uh, Matt, uh, or colleagues, if there's no other questions for the agencies, let's jump into public testimony. Uh, seeing that there are no other questions, um, Matt, can you start to open up, please? Uh, yes, Mr. Chair. Um, and just before I start, a reminder for everyone who's uh, in the public who's joining by computer, um, please use the raise hand function to indicate that you'd like to testify, um, if you would. And um, if you cannot find the raise hand function, you can use the chat or Q&A function to let me know. Thank you. And um, we'll go to the first person we have on the phone. Um, you'll hear two beeps when I unmute you, so you can start your testimony or indicate that you do not wish to testify. For those who uh, are testifying, uh, please uh, state your name. Uh, and if you are representing someone, please state who you're representing. And before we get into public testimony, I just got an indication from Councilman John Bullock that he's online. Although I'm not sure if he's using video, he may be, he's calling in. So Councilman John Bullock is on the line. Uh, Councilman Bullock, if you could please send the cell phone number or whichever phone number that you're calling from to yours over email uh, so that he is able to unmute you when it comes time to vote. That would be appreciated. Matt, please proceed with public testimony. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Okay, unmuting the first caller now. Uh, if somebody would have just heard two beeps. You can testify if you would wish to. Okay, uh, no response. Uh, next caller. Okay, uh, no response. And okay, the next caller should have just heard two beeps. Hello. Yes. Matt, this is Al Barry. Can you hear me? Uh, yes, Al, we can hear you. Uh, go ahead if you'd like to testify on, on the resolution. Caroline Hecker, Caroline Hecker is uh, is the one who drafted the bill, worked with the, with the liquor board, and uh, my background has been primarily with the original PUD approvals for this project, which uh, many the council may know is half completed and nearing completion. And the answer is elaborate on the, the question from Councilwoman Clark. Uh, the operator of the liquor store does not want to operate a tavern. And so we wanted to take advantage of this old tavern license that a previous uh, developer down in Canton Crossing, I believe, went to the legislature and created this new form of class A license. So that if he's not interested in the tavern and he's just having carry out sales, uh, we felt it was the right way to go and we appreciate your support. I don't know where Caroline Hecker is uh, on the call, but that's that's the sum of our uh, project. Mm -hmm. it's, it's all, Caroline, are you there? Or is she have to raise her hand? Oh. <laughs> uh, she is on. Yeah, okay. she's on the phone. We'll we'll get to her as we go through. Okay. Al, does that conclude your testimony? Yeah, that concludes it. We appreciate it. The council would support it. Uh, Yard fifty six is a great project for the city, and uh, looking forward to opening up uh, uh, this summer in part. I can't. Matt, next one up. Uh, that was the last caller. Um, would you like me to unmute? Um, Caroline Hecker, to add to anything? Yes, please. I, I think we have all the information we need. Caroline, I, I think we have all the information we need. Uh, I'm not hearing anything different from our colleagues, but if there's something you want to add, feel free to. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. This is Caroline Hecker, Rosenberg-Martin, on behalf of the applicant. I'm, I'm happy to answer any further questions. I think 
Um, we've covered sort of the waterfront here, but um, if there's anything else anyone is interested in, we're happy to answer. Um, I'm going to speak on behalf of the committee here and say that I think we're good. Um, I don't see any of my colleagues disagreeing. Uh, colleagues, there are four amendments. Uh, at this time, uh, is there a motion to move the four amendments, which we put on screen as well as in your inbox? I see a motion by Councilman Reisinger and a second, second. by Woman Clark. Uh, we'll do roll call uh, for the amendments. Costello is a yes. Clark? Yes. Bullock? Bullock? Yes. Pinkett? Yes. Reisinger? Yes. Sneed? Yes. Stokes? I believe Stokes is absent. One more time, Stokes. Okay, the amendments pass 6 0. Uh, is there a motion to move the bill favorably? <coughs> I see a motion by Councilman Ed Reisinger and a second by Councilwoman Mary Pat Clark. Roll call, Costello, yes. Clark? Yes. Clark is a yes. Bullock? Yes. Pinkett? Yes. Reisinger? Yes. Yes. Stokes is absent. This bill passes 6 0 with one, uh, one absence. This bill moves to the reader on Monday. May 18th at 5 p.m. This hearing is now in recess. We will start the next hearing. Uh, we are here for Council Bill 20-0522, Board of Municipal and Zoning Appeals, Repeal of Physically Requirements. I am Councilman Eric Costello from the 11th District, Chair of the Committee. Uh, I am, if everyone could please go on mute if you're not speaking exception of uh, committee members, which I believe the only one on the phone is Councilman John Bullock. Again, I'm Councilman Eric Costello from the 11th District, Chair of the Committee. I'm joined by Chair of the Committee, Councilwoman Mary Pat Clark from the 14th District. Uh, we are joined by Councilman Leon Pickett, 7th District, member of the committee. Councilwoman Shannon Sneed, 13th District, member of the committee. Councilman John Bullock, 9th District, member of the committee. Councilman Ed Reisinger, 10th District, member of the committee, and Councilman Isaac Yitzi Schleifer, 5th District, Councilman Christopher Burnett, uh, 8th District. We are also joined by Matt Simon, uh, who is uh, representing Mayor Jack Young, and we are joined by Dominic McAlilly, who is representing Council President Brandon Scott. Uh, with that, uh, I'm going to turn it over to the uh, sponsor of the bill, Councilman Isaac Yitzi Schleifer, for brief introductory remarks. Councilman hey, Schleifer. Chairman, can you hear me? Yes, sir. You have the floor. Yes, so um, this bill came up uh, because I have a constituent who's unfortunately suffering with ALS, who's looking to do a one-story um, addition to his main floor so that he can, you know, live stay living in his house and live on the main floor that would be um accessible and the timing just happened to coincide hey, can you give me one second the time the timing just happens to coincide with um you know the whole corona situation and so therefore he's been put on hold for for months and so in when inquiring with bmza i'm with bmza um it was i found out that there was a uh, an old law that uh, prohibited people from being able to um have these hearings you know via zoom or other web portals like we've been doing for the council meetings and so therefore a lot of projects across the entire city are just halted in times of emergencies and so um the intention here is that this is a temporary um exemption, which, you know, could become more long term in times of emergencies that would allow uh, the board to do what what most other city agencies are doing, and that is to to meet virtually so that the business of the city can continue. Thank you. Thank you, Councilman. Uh, we have committee reports. Matt, please correct me if I'm wrong. We have committee reports from City Solicitor, BMZA and Planning Commission. Is that correct? 
That is correct, Mr. Chair. All right, we will start with the law department. Uh, law department. Hello, Mr. Chair, this is Hillary Ruley from the law department. Hey, hang on one second, Hillary. Um, assuming all procedural requirements are met. Law department approves for form and legal sufficiency. Okay, go ahead, Hillary. Yes, we stand by our report. We will approve this text change. Excellent, thank you very much. Uh, next up we have, bear with me. Department of Planning, I'm pulling up your report, which isn't downloading for some reason. Uh, Eric Tizo, I'm assuming that's you and up. Oh, Bear with me for one second. Planning, uh, the Planning Commission uh, supports this bill. Go ahead, Eric, you're up. Uh, good afternoon, Mr. Chair, members of the committee. Uh, the Planning Commission heard this bill in their meeting of May 7th, um, and uh, they recommend its passage with one amendment. And I can go into the details if uh, you would like, or I can defer to Mr. Baumgartner at BMZA. Um, but uh, we believe this is a necessary bill. Uh, the BMZA is the only agency that we are aware of uh, that has this in-person requirement. Uh, they already missed uh, three potential hearings. Um, and this will go a long way to get them back to moving business again. Uh, the one thing that we were curious about as we saw in section three that there was a sunset date that was included uh, and we don't know that, that provides any particular benefit they should have the flexibility just like us uh, at planning commission and other agencies going forward uh, so we recommend an amendment uh, to strike section three uh, and with that we recommend passage of the bill excellent thank you, thank you very much uh, we're gonna let um now we're gonna go over to uh bmza derek Yes, Mr. Chairman uh, and Madam Vice Chairman and committee members, thank you very much for the opportunity to testify. Um, I'm certainly here to answer any questions that anyone might have. Uh, to clarify uh, just a couple of things very briefly, um, we are currently having hearings. Um, we are doing so um, legally uh, after consulting with the law department um, in terms of complying with uh, the zoning code as well as state law. What this bill does is clarify that the zoning code specifically does not expressly prohibit something like virtual hearings. Um, we believe that that um, that we're currently operating um, under the law, but this um, amplifies or clarifies that that the zoning code um, doesn't prohibit um, doing something like virtual hearings. Uh, the intent, as anyone who has moderated a virtual hearing, can attest to is not to keep doing these. Um, they're not the easiest nor the most pleasant way to have public hearings. As soon as we can resume normal operations, we absolutely will. Um, a lot of this testimony is provided in our bill, uh, in our bill report. Um, certainly um, happy to answer any questions that committee members um, might have. Uh, currently, um, Montgomery County, Baltimore County, PG County, Gaithersburg, uh, and and um, Anne Arundel County are currently having zoning, either hearing examiner hearings or their equivalent of the Board of Zoning Appeals hearings using virtual platforms. So we're not asking for anything other than what many other jurisdictions are currently doing. And as Mr. Tiso had um, mentioned earlier, um, this particular language in the zoning code only impacts BMCA. So we're simply asking for the ability um, or the reinforcement of the ability uh, to have something like virtual hearings um, I'm moving forward. Um, I'm happy to, uh, to answer uh, any questions that committee members might have. Um, real quick, someone who's on the line, I presume has a baby. Their noise machine for their baby is singing Baby Carol, if you could please mute. Thank you. Um, Derek, just for clarification, and your bill report, it says why section three should be uh, removed from the bill. This is referring to the same amendment uh, that Eric Tizo referred to. Is that correct? That's correct. Thank you very much. So we're just talking about one amendment. Correct? That's correct. And Eric, can you just, I know the answer, but can you just confirm for everyone listening? Yes, sir. We concur. Okay. And um, do we have the language for that amendment? Uh, Mr. Chairman, it's simply um, removing section three. So section three of the bill provides a sunset clause. 
So if the amendment were to remove section three, um, the bill would um, would read as removing two particular sections of the zoning code. Oh, I, I got it. Yeah, P page two, lines nine through twelve. That's what I was looking for. Okay. So Matt, can oh. you know that, that that's going to be an amendment the committee is going to entertain uh, on page oh. two, from striking lines nine through twelve in their entirety, please? Uh, Mr. Chair, if I could just offer a clarification, please. the um, the first sentence of section three actually provides when the ordinance takes effect. Um, and that is uh, when it's enacted. So it's, that last sentence. it's that last sentence. Yes. Okay, understood. So yeah, we're, we're talking about just removing that last sentence in lines 10 through 12 of page two. Got it. Okay, very helpful. Thank you, Matt. Um, before we get into public testimony, uh, Vice Chair Clark, you're up first. Uh, my question is, um, I, I didn't realize till today, and I somehow I don't have a copy of the bill in front of me, but I know what it says. I've been through it. So this is really not coming from the zoning board it's or the administration. It's coming from, because there's a constituent issue going on, and then that brought us all together on this. Derek, can you uh, start by- I'm asking, yeah, Mr. Bumgarner. Yeah, I'd like to start with Derek, and then if Councilman Schleifer will add anything that I can add. To it I'm just factually. I just because sure. I have a question after that. Sure. Um, so this particular bill is actually in a collection of bills uh, pre-COVID-19, um, and then when the quarantine hit, it um, exacerbated issues like the constituent that Councilman Schleifer had mentioned earlier. Um, so it was something that was in the um, about to get in the hopper anyway, and then there was a particular constituent issue that brought it to the fore. Um, if that answers your question, uh, Councilman. Yeah, it does exactly. And then my, my comment is this: um, I've been through. You're you're familiar with the problem I already faced when I had the chum community scheduled to come in about a zoning case now they couldn't get it postponed this was going to be a virtual hearing and the problem is if you look at the map that one of our community people i think it was a community person sent in you can see the parts of the city that have internet connections and the parts that less and less have them and at that began something in my district about uh not so much talking about the current emergency but the long-term idea of amending out um any termination date for virtual um capacity and authorization so um what what happens is what happens is a lot of people that can't get down there or that if they can't get down there because city hall is closed, it's all up to being um, virtual. And it's, it's a difficulty for some neighborhoods more than others. Now, I'm a member of a city council that's doing this right this minute. And I acknowledge that and even though I can never find the right button, I, I, it works. And we are in a problem right now. But I, I just have to explain that the notion of an amendment to make this permanent is of great concern to me, especially around the, the zoning board because of how many people really show up personally on so many issues and how many of those neighborhoods really don't have the kind of access we have right here today. Um, so, Mr. Chair, thank you. I just wanted to make sure this wasn't exactly coming from the zoning board, although I understand that it would have eventually. Um, rather, we had a, a pandemic or not. So I just want to say it's one thing for me to be against what I'm doing myself 
as a member of the council, but to do it, to have the capacity to do it from here on it is something I would find very, very problematic after this emergency is over because I feel like a member of the council that we have, that we will go back as fast as we can to personal hearings and meetings. That's basically, I'm sure will happen, but I'm not so sure with the zoning board, nothing against the zoning board, but it's such a populated place so many times with people that otherwise wouldn't be able to participate. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you, Vice Chair Clark. Colleagues, are there any other questions for the agencies? Uh, Mr. Chairman, again, this is uh, Matt Stegman from the, uh, the mayor's office. Uh, before we move off of uh, agency testimony, um, uh, I, may I be uh, recognized it? Of course, yes, sir. Okay, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, so I, I did just want to uh, speak a little bit uh, to something I think is um, uh, on point to what uh, Councilwoman Clark was just saying. Uh, as um, Mr. Baumgartner pointed out, this is a, uh, a piece of legislation that's uh, sort of been under consideration for a while. And because of the emergency situation we found ourselves in, uh, the timetable to introduce it was um, was accelerated. We wanted to make sure that, that the BMZA was uh, totally in the clear, operating uh, virtually and continuing the, uh, the the business of, of the city. Um, and the reason that the uh, that, that the administration did request the um, sunset provision be added to the bill um, was to you know again to make sure that uh, that everybody was able to get to work, uh, you know, without any sort of um legal issues uh as quickly as possible but that we did uh have an opportunity to um you know look at how we wanted to address this issue on a permanent basis um uh, up to and including just you know continuing to eliminate those requirements entirely um on a permanent basis but that there was um some opportunity to um look at it more thoughtfully and 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 you know make sure that we were um you know Making sure that we had a process that uh, allowed the uh, allows the agency to uh, to conduct the hearings that they need to have, but uh, also allow for meaningful public participation. And uh, I respect. I, I know the uh, the mayor remembered from his time as uh, council president, and I'm sure uh, Councilman Clark does as well. Again, there is a legislative history uh, from back, I believe, in 2011, um, but it might have been earlier than that when when these in person requirements were put into the zoning code. And I uh, just want to make sure that we're you know being thoughtful about uh, about changes. So that was the intention behind the sunset. But um, uh, obviously, you know, the, the this committee uh, will you know, consider the uh, the amendments that have been offered. And um, you know, we'll see what the what the will of the committee is. But I did want to add that for context. So thank, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Good night. Uh, Councilwoman Clark. Uh, I just I just wanted to say that not sure I, I i'm not sure i understood the whether the mr stegman is saying that the administration supports or does not support the amendment that's what i'm concerned about i'm concerned about this going forward beyond when the rest of us all go back to the way we should operate which is with people in the middle of the discussions whether it's a uh, board of estimates or whether it's the city council and other parts of government, but zoning board probably gets more people per meeting of showing up about issues than any of the rest of us do. And I think it's important if we're going to not, if, if we terminate this, in sync with what the rest of us in city government are doing that's one thing if this is forever in that environment in a techno technologically um unbalanced city then that's different that's really different for me it makes all the difference and i think that if we're going to permanently do that we we need a more outreach about it Thank you. 
Thank you, Councilwoman. Colleagues, any other questions for the agencies? Matt, let's start a uh, public testimony, please. Uh, for the oh, hang on one second, Councilman Risinger. Yes, Mr. Chair, uh, can you hear me good? Can you hear me? Yes, yeah. sir. Uh, I, I did, it's just a comment, real quick, is that the Planning Commission, which I sit on, uh, came up with this amendment and we supported it and voted on it to give BMZ a flexibility to have virtual hearings. If you do a sunset for August and we go into the fall and we have an issue again with this, uh, with, with the uh, pandemic, then we got to come back again because of uh, virtual hearings if you put a sunset date on it. And so I think it's, Planning Commission has hearings where we're like four or five hours and it's been working with the virtual hearings uh, and I think it's a new day and I just want to say that I support this and I think we should support the amendment. Thank you. Mr. Chairman, I have a couple of brief comments. Um, Matt, can you uh, open it up for public testimony? Uh, Mr. Yes, Mr. Chairman, well, Mr. Um, Bumgarner has something he'd like to say. Derek? Just very briefly, um, the, um, I, I certainly understand the concerns. Um, one thing I would express to committee members is number one, uh, just like this platform that we're using right now, um, you don't need a computer, right? So there's a call-in number. Um, we also, like always, accept uh, written testimony um, um, ahead of time. And the board has also uh, imposed a new rule which allows the board to essentially call back an approval or disapproval 10 days after a hearing if folks had trouble either logging on or calling in or providing testimony. Uh, so the intent of the bill is certainly not to take away anyone's ability to participate, uh, and the Planning Commission has actually seen an increase in participation. Um, uh, that's the first thing. The second thing, when, the, when this language was added in 2011, BMZA was the only agency impacted. So uh, the, the rule did not change anything for the Planning Commission or CHAP or for City Council. And I would ask the committee to place yourselves in the shoes of BMZA where um, you are all required um, um, ostensibly to be in the same room all at the same time. Uh, you can't leave for deliberations. You can't leave for discussion. Um, you're required to be in the same room. Um, so it, it, it puts restrictions on BMZA that no other city agency, including this council, um, are currently under. So by removing that, um, it's not placing BMZA in any other position other than every other city, every other city agency uh, is currently under. Uh, it doesn't change open meetings act requirements. It doesn't change other uh, legal obligations that were required um, to employ at all times. Um, so uh, I hope that goes a little bit towards um, uh, Councilwoman Clark's concerns regarding the bill. Um, and as as Councilmember Reisinger. I just testified to uh, the Planning Commission had a very good discussion about the bill uh, and specifically the sunset. Uh, and I and uh, BMZA agrees that if a sunset's placed and there is a new outbreak of, of COVID-19, we'll have to come back to this council and go back through the bill process um, in order to reinforce again what we already think that we're legally doing right now. Um, there are other reasons why this bill was uh, being planned uh, before the COVID-19 um, state of emergency, including when cases go up on appeal uh, to the courts and then are remanded back sometimes years later. So there are other ancillary reasons uh, to remove this language from the bill. The COVID-19 situation just um, brings that to the fore. Um, so I'm certainly able to answer any questions that um, other council members have. Uh, including the legislative history of the 2011 bill, uh, which added the language. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. That's good. Thank you, Derek. Um, uh, Matt, let's mm -hmm. open up for public testimony. I'm, I'm sorry, Mr. Chairman, uh, Matt Stegman again. May, may I offer? P please so, keep it brief. Please keep e it brief. Extre Stegman. No, extremely. Uh, so start at 2:30. So yeah, e extremely brief. I just uh, want to you know reiterate. I mean, the, it, it is important that this bill be passed 
swiftly uh, because we do want to make sure that there's that you know the BMZA is operating, you know, fully above board. It is it is an important clarification. Uh, again, the intent behind the sunset was to uh, let the you know give the the mayor and the council an opportunity to, um, you know, have a a longer and more thoughtful discussion while moving quickly. But if it's the uh, the pleasure of the committee and of the council that that you know that they do decide that this is the best way to move forward um you know that that is fine um you know we just wanted to make clear it, it is important that we uh that we get this bill passed and we do get this clarification so i uh, appreciate your time uh thank you again mr chairman understood and agreed matt thank you uh matt peters let's open it up for public testimony thank you mr chair we uh don't have any hands um raised from computer users and i'll just remind everyone from the public if you do wish to testify and you're joining by computer please use the raise hand function to let us know that uh, and we yeah, have matt, one matt one one quick two quick things one um there were a number of um letters of opposition and or support that came in for this bill uh, those were emailed to uh, all of the members of the committee so colleagues you should have those in your inboxes and matt we're going to do a three minute time limit for public testimony for each caller oh, please thank you Thank you, Mr. Chair. We only have um, one caller other than Councilman Bullock, and I'm unmuting them now. Thank you. Okay. Uh, okay. Uh, not seem like there's a response. Okay. Uh, Mr. Chair, I think that is all of the public testimony. Thank you, uh, Matt. Uh, colleagues, um, you know, we have here that um, I believe is going to put BMZA in the same position that our other um, uh, boards are in, uh, whether it's liquor or CHAP or planning commission. Um, so this is obviously critically important in light of what has transpired uh, with the new world that we live in post COVID-19. There are amendments that have been proposed and I think that uh, everyone is of the same mindset that um, we do hearings indefinitely, but Councilman Reisinger brought up a very good point uh, that we could very well have another outbreak of COVID-19 in the fall or in the winter. Uh, and avoid being in a position where we have to slow government down in order to go through another procedural uh, set of steps uh, in the name of BMZA uh, to, to do virtual hearings to keep government moving. So this, these, uh, this amendment makes a lot of sense to me. The amendment is to remove uh, the last sentence with the sunset clause, these two lines, 10 through 12. Uh, so Councilman Reisinger, I wanna thank you for your insightful comments uh, related to that. Is there a motion to move uh, that amendment? I see move. a motion by Councilman Reisinger. Is there a second to that amendment? I see a second from Councilman Stokes. Uh, we're going to do a roll call on that amendment. Uh, yes, Clark. Not surprisingly, um, I'm voting no on this amendment. I, uh, we all we regularly in the council with legislation such as we just approved on rentals relief date that is. X amount of days after the emergency is lifted. That gives us plenty of moving room and we could do the same here. So if uh, uh, COVID-19 crops back up or if it ever goes away to have a crop back up, that's the protection we use regularly now in legislation. It could be done here so that it's not a date certain, but it's a date after the emergency is lifted. So we could do it, but we're choosing not to do it. And I've got constituents in more than one um, neighborhood who are going to be extremely upset about this and for the reasons I've tried to articulate here today. Um, because I can't vote for the whole bill if it has this amendment in it that never lets it go away. So, no, 
Thank you, Councilwoman Clark. Councilman Bullock? <laughs> yes. Bullock is a yes. Pinkett? Yes. Risinger? Yes. Sneed? No. Stokes? Stokes? Sorry. Yes. This amendment passes five to two. Colleagues, is there a motion to move the bill uh, favorably as amended? I see a motion from Risinger. Is there a second? I see a second. second. Roll call. Costello, yes. Clark? No. Bullock? Yes. Pinkett? Yes. Risinger? Yes. Sneed? No. Stokes? Yes. This bill passes 5 2, moves to second reader on Monday, May 18th at 5 p.m. Uh, we are now in recess. Uh, we jump off the call, colleagues. Uh, we do have a budget and appropriations committee hearing. Uh, so we're going to switch over to a different WebEx on this. Uh, Matt, thank you for the job running the hearings. Uh, Derek, Eric. Tizo, Matt Stegman, thank you for joining us today. We appreciate it. Uh, stay healthy. Bye. Thank you. Thank you.